The worship aid for this Mass can still be downloaded to your tablet or smartphone from the parish app and the church website. The special intention for this Mass is given for the people of the parish. We ask you at this time to silence your cell phones in reverence to this Holy Mass and to remain until the end of the closing song. If you have any difficulty receiving communion, please speak with an usher. In keeping with our current safety protocols, we ask that you return to your seat after receiving communion and do not stand along the back wall. November 17 to 13 celebrates the National Vocation Awareness Week. We ask our parishioners to spend some time in prayer for the increase of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life for men and women. Uh, please see the bulletin for more information about this week. PAC 747 of the Cub Scouts will be hosting a spaghetti dinner for the whole community on Saturday, November 13, after the 4 o'clock p.m. Mass. Mark your calendar and more information will follow. The St. Vincent de Paul Conference is organizing a Thanksgiving dinner, food drive, in coordination with Operation Hope in Lake Park to help families in need. There is a flyer in the bulletin listing the items that are needed. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. The next meeting for the Families with Tots will take place on Saturday, November 13, at 9.30 a.m. in the Parish Hall. All families with children ages up to five years old are invited to a time of family fun and fellowship. Get to know other young families, and please see the bulletin for contact information. Please note that the parish offices will be closed this Thursday, November 11, in honor of Veterans Day. Please visit our website, www.stpatrickchurch.org, to access the week's bulletin for all parish information and updates. We thank everyone for their generous, ongoing support of St. Patrick Church. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Aidan. Please rise and join us for singing our opening hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth, on page 697. Good morning. Weather like this just puts me in a good mood. It's like this is a summer's day at home, just for the record. Um, it's lovely to hear the children's choir. We gather and we pray this crisp day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, and the peace, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Thank you. We come 
before the altar of God, realizing, and we see it in today's gospel, the hypocrisy, the gap between what I say and what I do, the gap between the ways of the world and the ways of the kingdom. For those times, we come before this altar asking for God's grace and his pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. You bring pardon and you bring peace, Christ of mercy. You reconcile us to God and to one another, Lord of mercy. May Almighty God forgive us all our sin and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, deceive us. Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory. Of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep us from all adversity so that, unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called after her, please, please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose but first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. 
the word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this, the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. 
In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Even though I've been doing this for quite a while, I'm still amazed at the complexity and the subtlety of Scripture. You've all heard the story of the widow's might plenty of times. It's often used as an example of generosity or trust in God. But the story has more to it than that. For example, it's this version we got today was Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, about the middle. In the Gospel of Luke, the same story is told, but it's placed differently. It is the very last thing that happens before the passion of Christ begins, right after Palm Sunday and before the Last Supper. And Luke puts it in there for a very good reason, that just as the widow gave her all with her couple of cents, so then Jesus realizes that he must give us all on the cross. Or the version that Deacon Joe just read is the longer version. And there's a line in it. Before the widow comes in, when he's pointing the finger, that you don't get in the other Gospels. It says, the scribes devour the houses of widows. They devour the houses of widows. And as a pretext, receive and recite lengthy prayers. It's an odd thing to say. But what Jesus is saying in that sentence is truth. And truth-telling is uncomfortable. Nobody likes to be told no. Nobody likes to have, true to myself, my faults pointed out to me. But sometimes you need to hear it. I need to hear it. One of the most effective ways that truth is told is in the mouths of children. They have no problem telling the truth. In fact, sometimes you wish maybe they weren't quite as truthful and as honest and as forthcoming. You would be amazed what your children tell us at All Saints School. (laughs) A few years ago, I was up in one of those classrooms and I got my own version of truth telling. I went in and I asked the kids, which was a stupid thing to do, why was I called father? The answer, because you're really, really old. (laughs) I should have walked out of the classroom. I was stupid, and I kept on going. Do you know why I wear a white collar? Yes, Father, to prevent fleas and ticks. (laughs) And the best one. They were drawing, and they were asked to draw God. 
So I asked her, one of the girls, I said, if you don't, we don't know what God looks like. No one's ever seen God. She continued drawing, looked up at me with pity in her eyes and said, you will in a minute if you just wait. truth telling. That one is funny, but sometimes it's uncomfortable. And the scribes were really uncomfortable when they heard this. That's why Luke puts it as the last straw before they decide to crucify him. The scribes that we hear in today's gospel were very influential teachers of the law of God. They had great authority. People were expected to follow their teachings to the letter. To the letter. They were given all sorts of honors and accolades. But the scribes were also full of themselves and hypocritical. But hey, who doesn't like to wear good clothes? But who doesn't like to get the best seat in the house? Or accept greetings in the marketplace? Who wouldn't turn down, I don't know, Broadway tickets, opening night, with a backstage pass? Who wouldn't turn down front row seats at a Baltimore's game? Although, funny enough, we don't see people fighting for the first pew in the church. We've got two free here. That line, I'm going to read it again. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, receive lengthy prayers was a deadly, deadly practice that took place. You see, one of the roles of a scribe in a land where most people couldn't read and write was to write wills, to deed properties. And some people abused their position. When a man died, they would visit the widow under the guise of counseling about the loss of her husband. In those days, of course, a wife could not inherit So it either went to one of her sons, who had a duty to care for his mother, or a brother of the deceased, and so forth. But a practice had crept in where the scribes would sit with an upset, grieving widow and say, maybe, maybe if you give and deed and will your property to the temple, to the church, we would say long and lengthy prayers so that your husband's soul would be safe. Good old guilt and good old fear. And then, after taking possession of the property, they drive the widow out and her children, forcing her to go to in-laws. It was despicable. And Jesus was preaching against it in the harshest language possible. So this time, hear the story of the widow's might. It's not a woman who is poor giving her last two cents. Jesus is praising her not for her generosity, which he is, but for her phenomenal faith in trusting all that she had to God, especially after she had been used and abused by the institutional church. There are echoes of that in this world today. She had literally been stripped of everything and tricked and put out on the side of the road. She had every reason to be bitter to be angry, but her faith, her faith is amazing. She didn't let her issues with the temple, or in our case, the church, get in the way of trusting God. That's the faithfulness and trust that brings us to the cross. That's the faithfulness and trust that the widow's might has. And you get echoes of that in the first reading. The widow in the first reading 
Now we heard Elijah finds her gathering sticks for her last supper, literally, and that they're going to die of starvation. I'm sure some of you have seen, as I saw earlier this week, pictures of starving children in Madagascar. To die of hunger is no way to die. And she prepares the last meal for herself and for her son. And then Elijah comes and asks for the impossible, asks to share in that meal a little less when her stomach is distended and growling. But he asks her to trust God with the little she has so God will multiply the supply. And she does. And scripture tells us that she was able to eat and drink for a year and her son as well and the jar never ran dry. I can't guarantee you full cupboards of bread and oil, but I can guarantee you that every time you trust in God, he will not disappoint you. It may not go the way that you want, like I was in the classroom, but God has never let us down. He never does. But he calls to trust. And there's lots of reason in this world not to trust. Lots of reasons. But like the widow, is where is your faith? Is it in things of the world or in things of the kingdom? We may hear of evil and corruption, famines in Madagascar and abuse within the church, but you and I will have opportunities this coming week where sometimes you are going to be the only presence of God. Yesterday we confirmed two of our teenagers. Um, they couldn't do it when the bishop was here because of COVID issues. So it was a very different ceremony. It was just quiet. And they were told yesterday be the voice when nobody else in the room is being kind be the voice when nobody in the room is being generous be the voice when nobody else in the room is being forgiving be the voice when nobody else in the room has the courage to speak up be the voice of bravery give give of yourself Sometimes she'll get it right, and sometimes she'll get it wrong, and I get it right, and I get it wrong. But we never stop giving. We never stop trusting. And what we will get back is amazing. Because Jesus trusted in the ways of the Father, we are blessed and fed and nourished at this altar and will be forevermore. Let's stand and pray. I believe in one God. Visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light and true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. Spirit was in the Virgin Mary. Our Savior, crucified and conscious God, to judge the living and the dead. Father and Son, Father and Son, first glorified. On the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church.
Knowing with our head, but acting with our heart is two very different things. But we know when we believe and we want to trust in the Lord's gracious love for us, so we pray. For government leaders and all who provide support services to veterans, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women to be open to God's call to spread the good news of Jesus Christ as priests, deacons, or consecrated persons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect of life from the moment of conception until natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For veterans and all who have served our country, especially those still struggling with the effects of war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who labor to gather in the harvest, that they and their important work be appreciated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick, including baby Ensley McNeil, will be drawn into Christ's loving embrace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, including Bud Adams Jr., George Polari, Nick Cola, and Lou Yodice, that they will be washed into waters of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died from the COVID-19 virus and for those who mourn their incalculable loss, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Bountiful God, you help all to seek your presence. Generously touch us with your love through Christ our Lord. Please be seated.
Lord is our light and our salvation. And because we are not afraid, we stand together and pray that all the gifts we offer at this altar will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we favor, we pray, O Lord, on the sacrificial gifts offered here, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. Amen. And let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you seen and you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sins, so that you will see and love in us what you see and love in Christ. And so, Lord, with the angels and saints, we too give thanks, as in praise and one voice we acclaim. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this life bread this saving cup we thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit Lord remember your church spread throughout the world bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Gerald our Bishop and all who serve remember the intentions of this Eucharist that's you this mass is offered up for you for your intentions for your worries your fears as we place them upon this altar, we remember on this all souls time, those who've died, our brothers and sisters in faith who have fallen asleep in hope of resurrection and all who die in your mercy. Have mercy in us all we pray with the blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Patrick and all the saints who please throughout the ages that we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, praising you glorifying you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
Together we stand and together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all our worries and anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace. Peace I leave you. Peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb, Lord.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give thanks. We beseech your mercy. And by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power have entered through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And before the final blessing, just want to say it's nice to see so many faces starting to come back. Um, it is lovely to have the choir back in all its glory and uh, with some beautiful, beautiful voices. And I want to say it's really nice having an ultra server back. Thank you very much. And Deacon Joe and everybody else who's involved in the process. So thank you. May Almighty God bless you, and may you bless others in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And do something nice for a veteran this week. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, City of God, on page 876.